creator of Enrich Engagement Technology and the Hot Prospect Formula, recipient of the Entrepreneurial Innovator Award at Harvard, and the number one international best-selling author of Not In My House, please welcome the CEO of Enrich Automation, Mr. Tom Mack. I earned so much money repairing, renovating, and fixing up Volkswagen bugs when I was in high school that I went off to college with enough money in the bank to pay my own way the whole four years. But naturally, since I'm an entrepreneur, I couldn't just sit and go to class like everybody else. I needed to find a way to make some extra money in my spare time, which was on the weekends. And my dad always told me, you can never make any money working for somebody else. You need to work for yourself. So I started looking for opportunities. And there was this thing at the time. This is the 1980s. And handmade, hand-painted t-shirts was a pretty big fad. And do you remember spin art machines where you'd drizzle paint on the spinning paper and it would make a pretty picture? Well, I started doing that, but supersized on t-shirts. And it really took off. And it was at the point where I had two employees working all week long, full time, making these spin art t-shirts with a $10,000 spin art t-shirt machine that I bought for the business. They would make as many as they could all week long, and at the end of the week, we'd sell them all. They were really hot. And people at stores would come up and say, hey, can I buy a couple dozen for my store? And that's how I started a wholesale business. I worked my way through the whole garment industry because I kept vertically integrating. Business was really good. So good that I never actually finished college because I was making so much money in the garment industry. But I wanted to sell finer quality garments, not just t-shirts. So I found a company to start making them for me. The owner of the company's name was Marty Shira. Now, I bought so much stuff from Marty that I was basically his only customer. And then one day, Marty asked me if I wanted to buy his business. He said, Holy vey, I've worked my fingers to the bone building this business, but I might let it go for $150,000. Well, that was a little bit more than I could spend, but just a few months later, he comes back and says, you had better buy this place quick before I sell it to somebody else. You'd be crazy to pass it up for $75,000. <laughs> Marty really didn't like me nosing around his factory or talking to his employees. But he didn't come in until 10 o'clock in the morning. So I got there really early, every day, and I studied his operation. And I was careful to leave before he came in. His employees taught me every detail of his business, from when rolls of fabric came into the loading dock to when finished garments went out on a hanger. I knew more about his factory than he did. And finally, I got to the point where I had bought every book from the Fashion Institute of Technology that a student would read in the process of getting their degree in fashion at FIT. I had learned and educated myself so much in the process of manufacturing and designing garments that finally I said to this guy, that's it. I'm done. This is my last order. I'm not going to buy from you anymore. I'm going to open up my own production facility. At that point, he sold me his whole company, all of his equipment, all of his employees who are already trained on how to use it. Everything except for a little bit of inventory that he produced for his own clothing line, which honestly wasn't up to my standards. He sold me everything for $10,000. And all of a sudden, I was a major player in the fashion industry. I had sales pieces, salespeople and showrooms in all the major markets. We were in Miami and Atlanta, New York, Dallas, Chicago, and LA. And as my business grew, we found our niche. We were the only ma American manufacturer of custom-made artistic garments who would private label. You know, sew in a store's label with a minimum order. You know, normally, if you wanted something private labeled, you'd have to order a ton of it from China or from India or, or whatever. But with us, you just place a minimum order and boom, it's got your store's label in it. You know, our sales reps would send us orders from chain stores. You know, on the front, it's for maybe 10 dozen pieces, but you flip it over and it says, Repeat this order for every store with a check mark by it, and there'd be check marks by each one of their 45 stores. And I'd smile, because that's a nice order for 450 dozen. I went to a lot of trade shows, and I took orders, and I talked to customers. But I noticed something. Sometimes people would really love our stuff, 
but they wouldn't buy at the show. You know, I'd get their business card and they'd take a catalog, but I'd never heard from them again. So I created a system to get these people to buy. I created a system that converted that lead into a sale. And we made so much extra money that we doubled our business just converting people who didn't buy the first time. I discovered exactly how to convert those trade show leads into sales. And that's why I wrote my book, How to Convert Trade Show Leads into Cash and Customers, because every business should be able to double their income. And in Rich Automation, that's what we do every day. We turn leads into sales.